A speakeasy is an informal event where industry professionals and seasoned small business owners can share the, their e-commerce stories. Uh, so you'll get to learn, laugh a little bit, and hopefully leave with some new ideas and ways to improve how you manage your e-commerce orders and your shipping. So I am joined by Josh Williams, our Senior Manager of Sales for Growth Accounts here at Shipping Easy. Uh, today, we'll be chatting about the correct way to ship perishable items for 2023. So Josh, feel free to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, Rob. Hey, everybody. Great to see you guys. Thanks so much for being here. This is super exciting. I've been really looking forward to this um, and it being the first one. Um, I'm ready to dive right in. So I'll, a little bit about myself. I came to Shipping Easy um, almost five years ago now. I started on the support team, um, answering phone calls and chat way back in the day, <laughs> way pre-pre-pandemic. I think that's how we categorize things now in terms of dates, maybe. Um, and then um, eventually, we're, you know, ended up on the sales end of things. And, um, and and now currently, I run the onboarding team. So the team that helps new merchants get set up and get their account all configured the way that they like it. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. And I love it. Every day is is new. And I get to meet a bunch of new people, such as some of the folks on here, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that's what I do now. That's awesome. Thank you, Josh. I'm glad you got the uh, the memo about wearing the uh, the classic gray shipping easy t-shirt. Yeah. You know, make sure that we match a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we totally Ex planned that too, by the way. Right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Excellent. So let's kick things off. Um, so we're going to kind of dive in a little bit and define what qualifies as perishable mail and then dig into kind of some, susp some specifics around certain types of products. Uh, we'll be providing tips and tricks along the way to make sure that uh, your shipping is easier and more cost effective for these items as well. So to kick things off, Josh, let's talk a little bit about what actually qualifies as perishable mail. Yeah, yeah, perishable mail. It's a good question. Um, so as far as that goes, it's kind of different for each carrier. So USPS considers perishable mail as Anything that can deteriorate the mail and thereby lose value under ordinary mailing conditions. It's very, very, very cut and dry, very, very corporate. Um, you know, it's it's honestly, it's it's the things that you would normally think about when you think of things that are perishable, right? Fruits, vegetables, things that can, you know, start well, and then over time, they can basically, you know, deteriorate and, and uh, you know, in, in their state, whatever that may be. Um, so it's, it's really important though, to know that USPS specifically also considers perishable mail to be sent at the shipper's own risk, right? So if you're shipping something that's perishable through the post office, that is at risk to you as the shipper, as the seller. Um, so they don't take any responsibility if anything were to happen to the goods inside while it's in their, uh, in their possession. Yeah, and I think we'll get into that a little bit more once we start talking about some of the uh, the specific types of perishable food or perishable mail, uh, mail. So let's kind of go over some guidelines. Like what are some general guidelines when you're shipping perishable mail? Yeah, good question. So a couple of things that um, that is recommended, and then there's a couple of things that, uh, that you have to do. So um, really anything that's perishable needs to be marked that it's perishable. There needs to be some kind of marking on the shipment that lets the carrier know that inside this package it are perishable goods. Um, you know, and then a recommended thing is, you know, especially for I would think most perishable goods, you probably don't want that box tumbling, uh, you know, end over end, you know, a bunch of times that, you know, it's really worth adding, you know, just a simple arrow you can draw on the box to say this side up. Um, although, you know, for the carrier, they don't guarantee that they'll be able to do that all the time. Again, you just want something on the outside of the package that lets the carrier know, hey, use a little bit more care with this. The, you know, what's inside can be damaged. This is, you know, these are perishable goods. So one of the ways that we help you out with that in Shipping Easy, as opposed to, you know, having to write, you know, perishable every time on every order, say you all you ship is perishable goods. Um, that's why we give you the option in your Shipping Easy account, and I trust you can see my screen here. If you can't, Rob, just you know, wave a hand. Yeah. Um, uh, right now we still have uh, Lexi's marker up. Let's see. Nope. Sorry, that's okay. 
I can stop. Maybe that'll help out. Well, if you're in your shipping easy account, it's actually really easy. You can go into your um, your settings and then into the label layout or the label template. And what that will allow you to do is go ahead and um, change the, the message that goes on the bottom of that label. So are you able to see my orders page now? There we go. Yes. All right. Great, great, great. So in your Shipping Easy account, it's just right here in the menu on the left-hand side. You click Settings. And then you're going to want to, again, go into these Label Sizes and Printing Options section. You click on Labels right there. This is where you kind of select your label templates, which we'll get into that a little bit later. But what you want is actually right down here. And this would be this, this label layout. It says Carrier Note. And what this is going to do is it's going to, when you click on that and select that, it's going to open a text box here. And this is where you're going to type in that it's perishable, right? So, so right. Um, and then you can kind of see on, you know, the larger example of the label, we'll always put the order number on the bottom there for you, but it's real big and bold right next to that order number on the bottom of the label, it says perishable. So that is a kind of a, a quick and easy you know, thing that we provide for you within the shipping easy interface to where um, you don't have to remember to do that each time. And so that's something that merchants can actually set up just to automatically happen for certain types of orders, Josh? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They can just go in here, select that, that label layout. And then once you put it in there and click save, it's going to just come out on every label, just, you know, just as is. So you don't have to keep doing that each time. That's great. That's a huge tip for for time savings. For sure. So now as we're talking about perishable items, there's going to be one thing that's going to be probably a common denominator across all of them. And that's going to be dry ice. Yeah. But dry ice definitely comes with some rules and regulations. So can you, can you dive in a little bit about uh, what merchants need to think about when they're using dry ice to keep their products cold? Yeah, absolutely. So dry ice is really, you know, it's, it's used all the time. Sometimes it's loose. Um, I don't know if you've gotten a shipment, you know, that had dry ice in it. Um, I know my kids love it when we get those shipments because then they take the dry ice and they put it in a in a jar and it smokes and does all the cool stuff, right? <laughs> um, but uh, um, or it comes in those you know those those sealed you know bags, but still, nevertheless, it is dry ice. Um, so there's a couple of things that, especially the post office, recommends that you do um, when you are shipping something with dry ice. First thing that has to happen is it has to have a special label or sticker. Um, that says that this package has dry ice in it. You can get those from your local post office. Um, they're not going to charge you for them. They're free. Um, just tell them you need a roll of dry ice stickers and they'll know exactly what you're talking about. And um, those, uh, you just need to take one of those and put it on one of the sides of your package. Um, doesn't matter where. You don't want to put it on the bottom, obviously. Um, or uh, on the top, you can if you like but it just needs to notate that there is dry ice in the package. One thing to know too, um, so any package up to five pounds of dry ice can travel via air transportation. So any, any package, any, any weight up to five, up to using five pounds of dry ice can, um, can travel you know, in the air across the country. Um, anything over, the, the five pound limit for dry ice uh, in the package, that then needs to go ground. So you can't have a, a, you know, a package that has six pounds of dry ice in it and send it you know, over air that's not allowed. Um, you need to either take some out or change the way that you're gonna ship that. Um, the, uh, Oh, for USP, I should say for international shipments, um, the post office does not ship anything with dry ice international. So that's that's one thing really important to note. Um, if you do need to ship internationally some perishable goods, the best thing to do would be to use a different carrier um, because the post office will reject it. Um, so one of the things that we do in Shipping Easy that kind of helps with when you're when you're packing your box is what we recommend is that you go into your settings and then you don't want to have to put in say you're shipping you know some of some of the same goods each time and you have a specific box that you put these perishable goods in and you know that you're going to use say two pounds of dry ice for this shipment what we suggest you do is you go in and make a package setup and it's super easy i'll show you how to do it right here 
you click package setup, click add new, and then we're just going to give this package a name. So this will be, you know, two pounds, uh, like a two pound box, right? Um, we'll say that the length is uh, seven by seven by seven, a nice, nice square. Um, and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to go down to this add to weight right here. And we're going to put in, in the pounds box, we're going to put two. And what this is going to do is when the order comes in that you're going to use this box for, it will take the, the weight of the items in the order. And when you select this box, it then will add two pounds to that total weight to give you the weight of the actual shipment. So this is a really great time saver for not having to go in and edit weights of your products. You can just leave the product weight as it is in your store. When it comes over and you choose this package, then we'll go ahead and apply that, that, that add to weight to the total shipment weight. So once we do this, we'll just click save and then there it's all saved. And then when on my orders page or my ready to ship page, when I go to pick which package I'm gonna use for this order, and I choose the two pound package, you'll see the weight go up automatically by those two pounds of dry ice that are in there. That's super helpful and you know, helps with the, uh, the finger fudging of accidentally uh, hitting too many numbers when you're in a hurry trying to get a package out the door. So yep. it's always nice to be able to automate something like that. So yep. now that we've kind of established what perishable products are and kind of what the guidelines are, let's actually look at some specifics. So we've established the first and foremost, anything that can deteriorate quickly can't be mailed, including fresh fruits and veggies. Um, but let's talk about some things that you really can mail. So um, what, are, what are some deteriorating, deteriorating mail that can be shipped? Yeah, um, some of, well, some of my favorite things I know, um, you know, baked goods, baked goods, cookies, pies, that sort of thing, um, especially, you know, around the holiday season, we see a lot of that, you know, being shipped around. Um, you may have gotten, uh, you know, a package that had one of those in there. Um, so there's not nearly as many restrictions on items like this. Um, the one thing you do want to double check, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, that your, that your baked goods aren't, you know, still raw. There's a chance that if they are, they could start to deteriorate in the, in the transit. Um, or if they need, you know, any additional cooking, they need to be either at temperature or cooled with the dry ice that's in there. Um, it's also a really good tip. Um, what we see a lot of, uh, you know, good shippers do is they include labels on the inside um, and the outside of the package. That way, if for some reason, normally these packages, you you know, if you're shipping something that's perishable, you'll kind of have a box inside of a box, you know. Um, sometimes if, if for some reason, you know, the outside box gets damaged, um, you know, the, the inside box is still safe and the contents of it are, are still good. Um, a couple other, you know, kind of quick, tips and tricks you you, you want to you don't want to make sure you want to make sure that your your packaging isn't you know too small that if it you know hits something on a conveyor belt or something that it could possibly rip or tear um you don't want your stuff obviously tumbling around in uh the box either that could that could be you know for a bad experience um just use you know use use smart packing tips you know reinforce the box um to protect your goods inside you know one rule of thumb that that we say is that, you know, if you're shipping anything that crumbles in your hand, uh, it's going to crumble in the box too. So, um, you know, just take that into consideration. And if you need to kind of wrap things a little bit differently or pad, add some additional padding to the box, you know, that, that padding is usually really, really light. It's not going to add very much to, you know, your total weight and cost of the label. And it's definitely worth it, you know, for your, your, the quality of your item getting there. Um, a couple of tricks um, I don't, that we've gotten from, you know, shipping easy customers who do ship, you know, soft cookies is they've said, put a piece of white bread into the container that you have, you know, your soft cookies in before, before sealing that up, right? The cookies will then um, absorb the moisture in the bread and then they stay, they stay fresh longer, which I thought was pretty cool. A um, little bit of science uh, there, you know, never hurts. Um, 
And then also with, you know, along the line of, of shipping breads, like we do recommend that you wrap those breads, you know, a couple of times in plastic. Um, and then if you're shipping things, you know, that's somewhat loose, maybe, you know, like granola or something like that, um, just make sure that that bag is sealed, you know, or that packaging is sealed. Really, the most important thing is that, you know, these, these packages do get, you know, moved quite often through transit, whether they're going across the country or across the county. Um, you know, these, the workers are moving fast and um, you just want to make sure you, you kind of guard your shipping um, as best as you can before you give it to the carrier. Yeah, I'm going to refuse the the need to make a cookie crumbles joke here about shipping. Um, <laughs> oh, but on a serious note, <laughs> um, it might actually be worth uh, doing something if you if you are shipping soft cookies, maybe putting something on the packing slip that kind of explains why that piece of random bread yeah. is in there. So it's not confusing yeah, why good there's a point. Good white point. bread in your cookies. Yeah, if you get a slice of slice of bread in with your cookies, you're gonna maybe have some questions. Yeah. <laughs> is this bonus? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So now you know we've kind of talked about some of the the easier things to ship. Um, but let's go back to the 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 cold items that are probably going to need that dry ice or you know some of the the more special handling. Yeah. Let's talk about meat and eggs. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is uh you know the carriers uh each carrier is very specific about these two things eggs and and you know meats and protein um so they have a lot to say about those which is really interesting um you know obviously for eggs you want to um you know just they're about as delicate as they can be right secure them as 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 much as you can um top and bottom sides don't leave any uh you know just the egg carton that you get at, at the grocery store is not going to cut it they're going to need some extra padding. Um, and then also, you know, that's where you can make sure that, you know, the just the simple arrow on the side, you know, this side up, um, that'll keep those eggs, you know, level, hopefully through the whole transit. And, and really the carriers do want to respect what you put on the packaging. The more information you can give them, the better they're going to be able to handle your item and get them, get that to your customer in the way that it's supposed to be there. Um, and then, uh, you know, again, you want to obviously factor in, you know, temperature, um, a, you don't want eggs getting real hot, right? So you're going to want to, you know, make sure that you know how much dry ice or how much cooling elements that you are going to put in there, um, in order to keep them, you know, at the temperature they need to be. Um, and then the same thing with, with meat, you know, meat is usually not that difficult to ship in the fact that it's not real delicate, like an egg shell. Um, and meat can kind of stack, right? You can lay steaks on top of each other. Um, but, you know, you want to be sure that they stay at the temperature that they're supposed to be so that they won't spoil, they won't go bad. And um, I know that when you, you can even, you know, I even see packaging that, you know, you can put, you know, a sticker that says eggs on the side. You know, again, like the more information you can give these carriers to, to care for your shipment, the better. And they'll just do a better job with that if they know. And definitely one thing I'll point out, uh, particularly when it comes to shipping meats, we have a blog post uh, written by our awesome content writer, Bailey Perkins, that um, actually has a diagram that really shows the way to kind of stack meat and dry ice and the type of packaging that you can use to yeah. make sure that that stuff does stay the proper temperature. So if you just head to our blog and search for how to ship food, uh, you'll find that blog post with a really great, helpful diagram to help you make sure that your stuff does not end up spoiling in, in transit. Yeah, that's true. She she really wrote it out well. And the diagram is great because it just shows you, you know, here's where you put your meat and you layer it with cooling elements, you know, cooling elements in between. It's really good. So we've covered things that don't really need to be cooled. We've covered things that need to be cooled. Now let's cover things that need to be cold. Okay. So you're shipping <laughs> things like ice cream, which is one of my favorite things, especially because it's, uh, you know, 80 degrees in Texas right now. Yeah. Um, how do you make <laughs> sure that your ice that. cream survives that Texas heat? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. And now I want some. So let's talk about <laughs> it a little bit. Right. Um, so ice cream, again, like it doesn't need to be said, but it needs to be said. It needs to stay cold. Right. So you definitely want to know. Um, you know, do your own, you know, you're have to going to do your own testing, right? How much dry ice, if I'm shipping this much ice cream, this much dry ice will keep it at that perfect temperature to when it arrives, you know, at its destination. 
Um, you should plan on average, regardless of where your shipment is going, especially for things like ice cream, yogurt, things like that, 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 you know, really need to stay cold. Just plan for the transit to take somewhere between 30 and 40 hours on average. Um, it may get there faster and that's great. Um, but if you don't plan for that and it takes longer than that to get there, your customer is going to have, you know, some soup probably, um, you know, or heading that way in terms of the consistency of what was ice cream. Um, again, you know, back to the dry ice conversation, you want to let your, your customer and the carrier know there's dry ice in there um, so that they can be careful, not only the carrier, but when your customer opens the box, they're, they're going to want to know and they can be careful to know that there's, there's dry ice in there that you don't want to touch it, you know, with your bare hands. Um, we also recommend that you, that after you put your label on, that you tape over the address label. Um, we recommend that because there is a chance, you know, in, in transit that there could be some smearing or, you know, something that would kind of, you know, damage or, 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 you know, make the barcode less, let, you know, eligible to be scanned. Um, so just put a couple of pieces of tape over that just to be sure. Um, make sure that your package doesn't have any leaks. Um, so even if your ice cream starts to warm up a little bit, it may get a little bit liquidy. If that box goes upside down, is that going to leak out? That's, you know, that's not good. Um, and then, you know, we, as a good tip, we, you know, we recommend again, kind of, if you can kind of put a box within a box um, or a package within the box kind of, you know, situation. And if you're going to do that, just take the extra time and put the customer's information on the internal box. And that way, you know, for some reason that outside box gets damaged or some, something happens, um, you know, the, the customer's address is still there. They, the carrier can still get it to where it needs to go and not have to send it, you know, back to you. Um, and then I would say, you know, now that we're talking, you know, about cooling, I, I've thus far only talked about USPS in terms of, how they handle, you know, dry ice and some of the, you know, restrictions that they have. Um, but the other carriers have their own. So for instance, you know, UPS, um, you do need that same, that same uh, label. It's actually called a class nine dot label. Again, you can get that from your, you know, your UPS rep. Um, and they, uh, it, they, they have to have that if there's more than five and a half pounds of dry ice in the package. Um, also, UPS will ship dry ice internationally. So that's a big difference between the Postal Service and UPS. Um, same with FedEx. FedEx will also ship dry ice internationally. Um, they, they ask that uh, you have to put a dot, uh, the, that class nine dot label on every dry ice package, regardless of how much or how little dry ice is in there. It has to have that sticker. Um, but you also want to make sure you definitely want to talk to your FedEx, you know, rep or driver about this because there's certain FedEx uh, sorting locations that do not accept packages that have dry ice. Um, so you want to make sure that, you know, you that your carrier or your drive, your FedEx driver, you know, goes out of the hub then and returns to the hub that is, you know, eligible to accept dry ice packages. Um, just they'll and they'll know. Uh, you know, when you ask them, it won't be a weird question, you know, for them. So don't worry about that. Yeah, I mean, we, we can always try to guide you in the right direction. Um, but when it comes to making sure that you're following the guidelines to a T, it is always a good idea to make sure that you're communicating with whatever carrier rep uh, you're going through, yeah. uh, just to make sure that you're hearing it directly from the source to make sure that you're you're covered and you're not going to run into any issues. Um, and as we talk about dry ice, you know, just a reminder that, you know, dry ice is dry because it's a gas, right? Like it's frozen CO2. Yeah. So you want to make sure that that has a place to escape. You know, if you try to seal it into a, a, a container that it's not going to let that gas escape, there's a possibility your package is going to explode. <laughs> and um, I don't think most of the carriers are going to deliver a blown up package. So. I Probably not. You know, if it has ice cream in it, they may like that. I don't know. But, you know, as a customer, if I'm waiting for that ice cream, I'm not going to be very happy if it comes. Exactly. You know, blown up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Josh. So what are some kind of tips and tricks specific to these types of, of items that, that we can provide for, for some of these merchants? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as, as a good practice, 
you know, prepare, prepare your shipment. We recommend at least a day before you actually, you know, give the carrier the package. That way you can make sure that it's, it's, you know, it's secure, it's solid. Um, you know, you may even, you know, move it around in your, in your shipping area or your warehouse. Um, that's a great way to kind of find out, you know, is your package going to hold up, you know, during transit. So plan ahead. Um, we also say that, you know, what data shows us is that if you ship your package earlier in the week, that's usually um, better, especially for carriers like UPS. Um, their peak times, you, you know, end up being toward the end of the week and the weekends. Um, and then they also have, you know, holidays and non-delivery times too. So you want to be, you know, knowledgeable of uh, if you need to get a perishable item to a destination in a you know, a specific amount of time, you want to make sure that, you know, the carriers are going to be working that day. Um, also, you know, for, for things like guaranteed services, so for instance, like uh, like UPS Next Day Air, that's an overnight service, okay? So even if you give it to them in the morning, that package is not going to move until late, late in the evening and get there at its destination the next day. So you want to, you know, prepare for, if you give it to them in the morning, it's not going to go out, you know, two hours from then, it's probably going to be a good, you know, 10, 12 hours from then that it's actually going to start moving. And then again, just to repeat, you know, on average, just, you know, plan for your package to be in transit, you know, between 30 and 40 hours by the time you give it to the carrier to the time that it arrives at your customer's door. Um, if it's less, great. If it's more, if you've planned for that, um, then, you know, you're going to be prepared. Yeah, love that. Super helpful. Make sure that everybody gets the delicious ice cream and, and other frozen goods that, they, that they're yes, looking for. Yes, sir. Yeah. But now let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. And okay. let's talk about one of my favorite things in the entire world, coffee. Yes. So what are, I what would are some... love to. Cheers, my friend. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a little afternoon here, so I'm done with my coffee for the day, but uh, start <laughs> every day with it. And I have it shipped to me. So uh, this is near and dear to my heart. Good. So uh, what are what are some kind of packaging guidelines when when you're thinking about uh, sending bags of coffee to customers? Okay, yeah, great question. Well, first of all, there's you know most likely not going to be any dry ice involved or <laughs> you know any of uh, yeah, it's time for midday iced coffee, I think, right, Rob? Um, <laughs> exactly. There's not going to be any dry ice involved or anything you know like that. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about those stickers that go on the outside of the box. Um, for coffee, especially, or anything, you know, any perishable that's consistent with coffee, whether it's ground or whole bean, um, really the wrapping of your coffee is going to be the most important part. So you want to make sure that, you know, if that box that has your, you know, maybe one pound coffee bullets in it, that if it were to bump up against the corner of a conveyor belt or something, and the corner, you know, rips through the cardboard of the box, is it going to also rip through the bag of coffee that's in there? Um, you know, it could very, very well happen. We've seen it happen. And then at that point, you know, the whole shipment is damaged. They need to send it back to you. It's a lot of paperwork and nobody wants to mess with that, right? So just take a little extra care. Think about, you know, put yourself in, in kind of the eyes of the carrier and um, you want to make sure that you you take a little bit of extra time, just some bubble wrap. You know, it, it weighs nothing, and uh, it will just give you that little bit of extra, you know, security uh, to so where those things you know don't get damaged. Also, um, it adds yeah, it adds a little layer you know layer of protection, and you know it can also help seal in the flavor too, um, because when those coffee bags, even though they do you know, they're sealed, they do have a little bit of an air vent, and it can release, you know, some of those gases, those, that padding will help, you know, make sure that it, it gets there uh, the way that it's supposed to be. Um, you really want to make sure that um, you, you know, kind of, if you can, you pack those, those, those coffee bullets, you know, as, as tightly as you can together, the tighter that they are, the less likely that they're going to get shifted around and break. Um, so if you can't, you know, use a box that is, you know, sized for just the amount of coffee that you're shipping um, and not have a bunch of extra space in it if you can help it. Packaging, you know, and choosing, you know, package wisely, wise packaging, you know, is is, is very key to a business. Um, it'll save you time. It'll save you money. Um, it'll save you work, really. 
Um, and so you want to make sure that you pack them tight. If you can't get them tight, then use something like paper or bubble wrap or newspaper, you know, anything that you can put in between to kind of make sure that whatever is in that box is nicely packed together um, so that it can move as one unit and not have stuff, you know, sh shifting, you know, back and forth. Um, so the other thing is, and Rob, you spoke about this, about the dry ice in terms of it, you know, it's a, it's a, it releases gas. Coffee is going to release gas as well. You know, like we talked about, they do have those little valves. Um, it's not a lot if you're shipping one, you know, pound of coffee, but if you are packing 10, 20 pounds in a box, you know, when you open up that box, it's beautiful because it's going to be very fragrant. And that's kind of my favorite part <laughs> of, you know, getting coffee <laughs> in the mail. Um, but you do want to, you know, I say a packet tight, but the, like it, not too tight, you know, do the Goldilocks with it. You know, you don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose. Um, just use your best judgment there, but it, just account for, you know, if it's going to be in transit for a while, especially if you're shipping overseas internationally, um, you want to just allow a little bit more space in order for that gas to kind of, you know, be released and be contained um, as opposed to having something, you know, bad happen. I, you know, the, the chance of, of a, a box of coffee exploding is probably very little, but you know, over time, who knows? And you just want to, you know, on the side of being cautious that way. Yeah, this is something I actually learned uh, while we were doing a lot of the research for for these different products. Is that I didn't actually realize that that gas does get trapped inside the coffee beans, and then that can actually uh, disrupt the coffee or the flavor of your coffee when when you're grinding and brewing it. That's uh, yeah. It's kind of like, wow, that's crazy, that's huh? Interesting tidbit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, you know, and for the longest time, I don't know why, but like, I'm like, coffee's, per yeah, coffee's perishable. It can go bad. You know, I don't know if you've had a, you know, coffee made from old beans. It is not tasty. Not and I'm, I like my coffee kind of, you know, I'm not picky about it, but that, that borders on, you know, uh, I'll pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and people who know coffee, they want that coffee to oh, be man. at its, at its peak. Oh, yeah. So speaking of which, let's talk about some of the best ways to get that coffee to arrive fresh in as quick a time as possible. Okay. Yeah, good. This is this is kind of where I I, you know, if you're shipping coffee or, or again, you know, you know, think perishable goods like it, um, they normally come in like a one pound bag or a like five pound bag, something like that. Um, normally, you know, USPS is gonna be your go-to. One, because the price is going to be good for the, the size of the box and the weight. And, you know, they'll deliver it between one and three days. And so you can basically get it to anywhere in the domestic U.S., you know, in a reasonable amount of time, you know, the, that one to three day mark. So where USPS is really good in, and you can double check to see if, you know, well, this, yeah, I qualify for this, is that they offer what's called cubic rates. So cubic rates are something that is specific to the post office and, and to the postal service that if you're going to do right by them and, and pack your box in kind of a nice square size um, and have it be kind of not too heavy, um, then they'll give you a discount on the price. It's called cubic pricing. Um, and it, it, any, any package um, that is between two and 20 pounds could potentially qualify for a discounted cubic price. At that point, it's gonna it's gonna be dependent on what are what are the dimensions of the box, and there is a long kind of brainy math formula that fall you know that calculates whether it does qualify for cubic or not. Um, what I can tell you is that Shipping Easy will go ahead and calculate that for you and always give you the cheaper cubic price if your package qualifies for it. So if you're asking, well, what do I need to do in order to make sure I get that cheap price? You don't need to do anything extra. Just put in the accurate dimensions and the accurate weight, and we will give you that you know cheap cubic price if it qualifies for it. Um, the other thing that you uh, can do, and this is specifically you know it's it's really handy for kind of those one pound you know coffee bullets, is use some of the 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 flat rate boxes from the the you know from the post office. You can get them free from your local post office. And, you know, the, the old tagline there is like, if it fits, it ships. So, you know, if you can fit 20 pounds of coffee into this box, it'll still, you know, it, it'll be $5 to ship that wherever in the U.S. as long as it's in that box. It doesn't matter if it's five pounds or 20 pounds, it's the same price. 
So use some of their packaging if you, you know, if you can, if that's an option for you. And it's free. You can get their packaging for free. Your postal rep can give them to you. You can uh, go to USPS.com and request them. You can also go into your local post office and ask for them. Um, also, if you're a Shipping Easy customer, in the left-hand column, we have a supply store where you can access those USPS yes, that's right. boxes as well, as long as, yeah. as well as other supplies. Yeah, that's yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. I totally just you know kind of forgot about that. So let me show <laughs> you. I think um, you know right up here. So Rob is talking about you know this. Um, it, there's the playbook there, um, and then um, you can go to the the store and you know get those those um, those supplies. So let me show you a little bit in terms of kind of what um, cubic pricing can do for you on your shipments and to make sure that you're actually, you know, shipping it the correct way. So we sometimes hear questions about, you know, do I need to put in dimensions for my shipments? Um, we always say it's always a good habit to do that. The, the carrier is not going to be mad if you do that. Um, they might be a little bit mad if you don't, depending on the shipment, right? So, you know, if we go to say, you know, this, I just have an example, you know, shipment here. Um, so what I will do is uh, I'm going to change this to USPS. And um, we're going to say that it's, you know, priority mail. Again, anything over one pound has to go priority mail. Anything underneath that qualifies for first class. Um, so we're going to say it's priority mail. And, and then it's going to ask me, you know, my packaging and what package am I going to use? And there you can see our, our, our saved packaging with the two pounds of dry ice added. There it is right there um, you know, from, from earlier. Um, so if we choose that, it'll add that two pounds you know, to our weight. Um, but for this, I'm just going to put that we're just using a regular package, OK? And it's five pounds. And uh, let's see, I have that. And what it did is it went ahead and it calculated my price to, uh, you know, from Austin, Texas to Florida at seventeen dollars fifty four cents. Right, that's that's a lot. Um, even though it is what five pounds going, that's still that's still pretty pricey. However, I didn't put any dimensions in, so the USPS doesn't know how big or little this box is. It just knows how much it weighs, and what it wants to know is. How big or little is this box? Because we want to see if we can stack them real nice and neat in our trucks. And if we do that, we can fit more in, and therefore we don't have to use as much gas. And so we can give you a discount on the actual price of your label. So I'm going to say, you know, my box is a real nice and neat seven by seven by seven. And then when I hit update, Shipping Easy is going to automatically calculate that new dimension and weight. And look, it dropped down to just almost 10, a little under $10. So huge savings, right? Almost a $5 savings just by filling in these dimensions and giving the carrier again, that little bit of extra, you know, information. That's why it's always super important to put in, especially for, for priority mail, um, you know, your dimensions and make sure that that's in there along with the weight. Um, so that's USPS. Now, UPS. Um, UPS can be a great option. Um, UPS ground can be a really, really great option um, for those heavier shipments, right? That's where UPS really excels. Why? Because they have a bunch of trucks out on the road. They can afford, you know, to take your heavy boxes and get them across the country because they have, you know, a bunch of these trucks, right? Um, so, and then if you use our Shipping Easy UPS, we give you a 78% discount on your UPS rate, which is crazy. So you don't need to run out and get your own UPS account. You don't need a UPS rep to give you uh, a, uh, you know, a special, you know, rate. Um, you can uh, just go into your Shipping Easy account and turn on your UPS, uh, you know, by, sh by uh, Shipping Easy in the carrier section here. There's just a one click for it in there. Um, but you can kind of see the difference if we say that we're going to ship this UPS and we'll say ground. Now they say five days for ground, right? And we leave the weight and dimensions the same. You know, we're back up to that $19. So this is where at this, at this point, with this shipment going from Austin to Florida, even though it weighs five pounds, still going to be cheaper with the postal service. Now there will be a time when UPS does kind of win out on the, uh, on the rate. Um, but for this one here, that's still 
that's still, you know, uh, the post office still wins out on rate there. Um, now, if we move to FedEx, FedEx is a little bit of a different situation. Um, so again, we don't give you a FedEx account. You have to have your own, um, but you can plug it in to Shipping Easy and get your rates um, shown in here too. So you don't hop, have to hop back and forth. Um, so for this, we're going to say, you know, we're going to choose FedEx and um, we'll say it's FedEx home because it's going to a residence and we'll leave uh, the package is just a, a pack, just a regular box um, and it's five pounds and it's seven by seven by seven. And we'll see what their rate is. You can actually see the cost of the actual shipping label is $11.88. So it's kind of in between the USPS and UPS in terms of the actual label cost. Well, then why is the total almost $20? Well, FedEx is going to charge you these additional options and fees of almost $8. And this is where Shipping Easy is so different from your, um, from your FedEx ship manager or other uh, you know, shipping solutions that allow for FedEx. A lot of them, if not all of them, will not show you this additional fee. You'll just get that on your FedEx invoice. It'll just be automatically invoiced to you. Um, but here's where we'll break it out and show you, well, yeah, the actual price of the label is going to be this, but they're going to charge you that. So you're really going to have to end up paying this in total in order to ship this box. Cool, Josh. So um, we're coming up on the time here. So let's kind of rapid fire through some some tips and tricks that that coffee merchants might be able to employ um, to make their the shipping easier and a bit more cost effective. Okay. Sounds good. Um, gosh, I would say first tip would be you want to compare, right? Compare the carriers just like we did here. Um, we make it really, you know, pretty simple for you to go in and, um, you know, do the, the browse rates uh, feature to where you can see, uh, you know, you can put the carrier side by side and you can see what that rate is and uh, be able to choose the one that, that, you know, is the cheapest or the one that makes, you know, sense uh, for you. Um, the next thing I would say in terms of kind of tips and tricks uh, would be, uh, you know, if you're, well, what I wrote down here is if your shipment exceeds the 20 pound limit for the, uh, the priority mail cubic, um, you know, you can use another carrier or you can, again, look for those flat rate boxes from USPS. They don't have them just, you know, for the small stuff, they have bigger ones. So go in and see if, you know, any of those will work for you. And again, if it fits, it ships up to 70 pounds. So it can be two pounds or it can be 68 pounds. It's still going to, it's going to be that same price no matter what. Um, and then one thing I would suggest is, you know, a lot of people like to use, you know, packing slips uh, to make sure that one, you know, you may include it in your shipment so that the customer knows what they're getting. Um, but some people use them for actually the pick and pack process. Um, and one thing, a good practice that, that we recommend is go and set that packing slip and label template up in your Shipping Easy account. Go to your settings, go to the label sizes and printing options, and then you'll see the different templates there of, you know, just printing the label or printing the label and the packing slip or printing them both on one page. Um, you know, things like that will really, really help speed up your pick and pack process and it'll help you be more efficient and more accurate. And it's all done here in Shipping Easy. You don't have to configure your printer to do anything special. You just go and choose that. It's one click. We make it very easy for you. And then you can get back, you know, to, to printing labels and doing what you need to do in order to get your perishable goods where they need to go. That's awesome. And then um, one that I love, I've actually learned this from a couple of merchants. Uh, Shipping Easy has a customer marketing email solution uh, built in as an add-on. And one thing that's unique about that is you can actually use delivery triggers as email wow. triggers. So if you yes. know the delivery date, which a lot of external email solutions wouldn't know, you can then set up an automatic reminder when you, you know, if a, if a customer buys five bags of coffee, you can kind of guesstimate about when that would run out. And then just before that, remind them, hey, I, hey, we, we, we imagine you're getting low on this coffee that you ordered. Would you like to reorder and, and yeah. do your order and make it super simple to keep that repeat business going? 
um, especially with something that is consistently consumed like coffee is. Great, great tip. Yes, that's, yeah. And again, it's a set it and forget it, right? With the automated campaign, uh, you don't have to do anything. Go into the, you know, to the marketing tab and, um, you know, get that going. It's, it's super easy to go in and, and you know, get that taken care of. Absolutely. Great tip though. So we've got some fantastic questions, actually. I'm, I'm really excited about some of the, the engagement that we've been getting here. So awesome. um, Josh, I'm going to throw a few to you and see if, um, see if we can get some of these questions answered. So uh, first one here comes from Angelo and said, any suggestions on reducing shipping costs when shipping perishable items? When you ship perishable, you obviously need to ship quickly. When we ship two-day air with UPS, our shipping cost is very high. Any suggestions on shipping at a lower cost? Yeah, great question. Um, always the question, right? You just want to make sure, Angelo, I, you, you may be doing this already, um, but you want to rate shop, right? There, there's a reason the carriers compete against each other. Um, and so you want to make sure that, you know, whatever service or carrier you're using, that you are actually getting the best rate. Um, the really, the only thing that, that we suggest, other than, you know, making sure you have the knowledge of getting the best rate, is it really comes down to packaging. It comes back to what what box are you using? What are you putting in the box in order to keep it hot or cold? You know, whatever that is. Are you being the most efficient with your space? So again, kind of, you don't want it so tight. You don't want a whole bunch of room inside, but you want to make sure, because even if you knock it an inch or two off of those dimensions of the box, that could be the difference between a couple of dollars. In, in your shipping. So you just want to make sure that you are, you know, one being accurate, but two, you're being smart in terms of, you know, for this order, you're going to use this box as opposed, you know, to this one. And these are, that's a question that our support team, if you're not sure like where to start, um, our support team would love to, you know, get on a call with you and be able to go that, you know, go through it with you. So you know kind of how to do that. And then again, with shipping easy, once you do it once, we're, it's going to remember it. It's going to recommend you do it the next time. So that's kind of the best practice there in terms of trying to drop your, your label cost for, you know, a couple of dollars or so. And Josh, do you think um, setting up some shipping rules based on the distance traveled to try to find, you know, what carrier is going to be most optimized during that process would be a way to cut down costs as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. If you know, you know, you're maybe on the border of one state and the next, and it's the difference between one shipping zone and another. Um, if you know, kind of, you know, I can, it, you know, I can, even though I'm going to this state, I don't need to send it air. You know, it doesn't make sense for me to do that. I can still send it ground and that's going to be a lot cheaper than sending it air. And yeah, you can do that in your, your, your automation rules. You come into settings, shipping rules, and then it's really quick, you know, again, our rules work off. If this is true, then do this. So if your, you know, zone is equal to say they're right next door to you, they're in zone two, right? Then go ahead and set, you know, my, um, my shipping preset of that's going to be UPS ground, or that's going to be, you know, priority mail, whatever that is. And then once you make this rule and click save, you won't have to worry about this. Shipping Easy is going to look at the zone. And if it's two, it's going to apply this rule to it already for you. So yeah, great idea. That's great. Um, we have a question from Jill. It says, we ship organic stone milled flour and grains, which is awesome. Ooh, yeah. uh, we place a sticker on our boxes reminding our customers to keep the product cool. Do you think it would be a good idea to add perishable to the UPS label? You know, I would say, Jill, like it never hurts, right? Um, it never hurts. And if you you know, don't want to write it on there again, you can use that label template. Um, again, the, you know, the carriers, uh, the drivers move fast and uh, anything that'll help catch their attention, you know, perishable, we kind of all, we've seen that on packaging. We know what it means. It means you kind of handle it with a little bit more care, no matter what it is. Um, I would say good for you for already putting stickers on there. That's, you know, to keep it cold, that's great. Um, go ahead and add that perishable. I would say it definitely couldn't hurt. And again, that could be for your, um, you know, your carrier, but it could also be for your customer too. Um, if they're getting multiple shipments in the day, they may grab it off the porch, you know, and be kind of rough with it. If, then again, if they see it says perishable, they may, you know, take a little bit of a pause. Yeah. I love that. Uh, we have a question from Leslie that says, how do I put the dimensions in shipping easy to auto populate every time since I use the same box and the same weight every time? 
Oh my goodness. Thank you. Whoever asked this question. I love this. This is one of my favorite questions because I'm like, yeah, you don't want to type that stuff in every time. It doesn't make any sense, right? The first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and create that package setup. What is the size of that box? We'll use our seven by seven by seven here, right? And, you know, we'll go ahead and take off the, uh, the dry ice um, just for this example. So this is just a seven by seven by seven box. Then what you're going to want to do is take that box and make it into a preset. So you come into shipping presets and you say new preset. It's going to ask you, okay, what carrier are we using? Well, we're going to use the post office. And what service do you want to use? We're going to use priority mail. Okay. And then what packaging are we going to use? We're going to use that two pound box. And then it says, okay, great. So it's the service, it's the carrier plus the service plus the packaging equals the preset. And now what do we want to call this? We can just make this whatever you want that sticks out to you when you're shipping. So this could be, you know, your seven by seven by seven box. Okay. Um, you can attach a keyboard shortcut to it. If, you know, this is all that you use when you ship, you can just make this the default preset for domestic orders. And then every order that comes through will just automatically have all this applied to it, you know, and then you can just select all, buy and print, and you can go and have a cup of coffee after because you saved a bunch of time, right? <laughs> um, so, but if we create this as a preset, then what it looks like on, you know, your, your shipping page, it puts it in that drop down box um, to where you can go, oh, wait, I got to do one thing. So sorry. You're going to want to make it available to your, you know, in that drop down box, you want to put that star next to it, right? Um, so we go over to shipping. And then in that, in that pull down, it's going to be available to you. So instead of typing all of that in, you know, with the, the weight or the, uh, you know, the, the box sizes, I just choose this one thing and it's going to recalculate the price give me my price right there on the orders page so I don't have to do anything else. So great question, whoever asked that. Thank you. I think we just changed the game for Leslie. <laughs> yes, I hope so, Leslie. Yes. Um, this one's a really good question. It's a uh, very timely. Uh, this comes from Gimme Gummies Shop. It says, UP USPS just got rid of the regional rate A box, uh, yep. flat rate box. Uh, do you have any recommendations for a substitute? Ooh, uh, that's a great question, actually. Regional rate A, you know, honestly, we don't see a lot of people using um, regional boxes regularly. So if that's you, um, that's wonderful. Normally, you can, uh, it's going to take a little bit of homework. It may be using, you know, another carrier's flat rate box may be the answer. Um, it may be, um, you know, using, you know, the, the cube, you know, cubic. Cubic will make up that difference for you, right? In terms of, you know, I was using this regional rate A, now I'm just using regular priority mail. Yeah, but what are the dimensions of it? Does it qualify for cubic? Because you may get that same rate or it may even be lower, I hope, for you. So I hope that helps yeah. you out. <laughs> Let's see. Um... And somebody asked if we will get a copy uh, for reference. Yes, we will be, we have been recording this and then we will send this out as a follow-up after the... Uh... After the webinar is over. Um, and so Angela came back and said, thanks for the great advice, guys. So we ship edible cookie dough. Mm, yeah. And it needs to stay chilled. Uh, yeah. We just found that uh, UPS is the most reliable with shipping times, accuracy, and the care of the package. Is there anything specific that could help reduce shipping costs with UPS in particular, since we use them exclusively? Maybe we can use the shipping easy rates as opposed to our own. Um, what could potentially help? I think, you know, going back to what we were saying earlier of using the zones and focusing on, mm -hmm. you know, you may not need to use that second day or every time, as long as you package it well with the, the cold pack materials and, you know, just make sure that you're using within shipping easy, what's going to be the most cost effective, depending on the destination. Yeah. Um, if you're sticking with UPS exclusively, I think that's probably going to be your, your best approach. Yeah. And I would say, you know what, if you're not using um, if you have not either, even compared our UPS rates to the ones that you're getting, it costs you nothing to do that, right? You can just go into your carriers page, turn on our UPS rates, and then compare ours with yours. Um, you may find ours are cheaper already, and it'll save you, you know, money just by changing and using this carrier as opposed to the one that you got. Again, you know, ours are on average seventy-eight percent lower. So I would first recommend that you go and do that and compare our UPS rates to yours. 
The second that I would recommend, um, you know, it does your, can you use, you know, UPS SurePost for your shipment? We do show that, you know, in, in, in Shipping Easy, that, that may be a packaging option um, that is available to you. So definitely, you know, check that out. Um, compare our rates to, to yours. Yeah, I would recommend that. And then I think we have time for probably one more. Uh, Brits R Us says, when comparing carrier prices, it would be great if you could select the option you require from the comparison screen. Uh, if you can do this, please show how. So uh, would this be the the rate calculator, Josh? Probably, I'm, I'm guessing that's probably the rate calculator. Yeah. So let's see if that's what um, if that's what we're talking about here. So if I go into actions, or actually, I want to go... Um, well, let's go. Let's go to our ready to ship screen, and um, the rate calculator is available to you on the orders page. I have a test account, so it's not showing it there. But this is what it looks like on the orders page. I think this is what you're talking about, where you can compare them side by side. Um, again, we take all of the shipment information and put it up here for you from that order, so you don't have to type that in again. And then, um, you know, you can click back and forth between the different carriers that you have put into Shipping Easy. Um, the thing here is that we're going to show you all of the different ways that you can ship. Um, if you say, you know, well, hey, I don't ever use Priority Mail Express. That's OK. You don't have to look at that. We can't take it away from, you know, for you, though. Sorry. Um, so that's going to be in there. Um, again, all, all of your, you know, UPS options, you know, with the different uh uh, you know, package ways to package and then FedEx as well. Um, and then from here, we do have this select button on the side. So if you find out, you know what, um, it, as it turns out, this uh, soft pack cubic box is going to be my cheapest, then go ahead and select it here. And then it's just going to take that option and put it back into that order and recalculate the postage there for you. Um, so I hope that's what you were looking for. And again, that same rate calculator is going to show up on the uh, on the shipment page, on the orders page, under the actions button on the far right of the order. You'll see it in the drop down menu there, and you can just choose that. Fantastic. All right. So it does unfortunately look like we are running out of time, but uh, we definitely appreciate you all for being here and being so engaged and asking such fantastic questions. Before we go, I do want to let any of our merchants who might be in the Portland area know that we're going to be at the Specialty Coffee Expo April 21st through the 23rd at booth 2481. So if you're out and about in that area, stop by and say hi, enter to win some goodies. Um, we definitely would love to see our merchants and say thank you for, for being one of our favorite people. Yeah. Uh, we will be back with another Speakeasy event on May 10th, where we will be chatting about branding the entire shipping process. So definitely don't miss out on that. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. And we hope you have a good day and happy shipping.